That better? One, two, three? Gotcha. All right. Well, I mean, get things back to normal. Um, appreciate all your prayers. The past couple of weeks, I've been able to breathe a little bit. You know, not been able to breathe is a big deal. And I, you know, I never had any, uh, I don't want to say compassion, because I guess I did, but I never had much thought towards somebody with asthma or hard to, hard to breathe. It just never occurred to me. I, that's a big deal. <laughs> that's a big deal, not being able to, to breathe in. I'll, uh, I'm going to be okay, though. I appreciate y'all's prayers. Oxygen's about 93 still, but uh, it, it's coming back. Uh, y'all keep, keep us in your prayers. Uh, continue to remember the young man that was in the four-wheeler wreck. They're gathering up foods and stuff now, cakes and things for a uh, cook out the, uh, the dinners this weekend. Is that right? I'm still trying to learn. Y'all, y'all good? Okay, but it's this coming weekend, I think. But uh, keep them in your prayers. Um, what other prayer requests are we? Hey, you too. Yeah, remember Daddy. Daddy had knee knee surgery today. He thought he was going to have him a knee replacement. He come find out it wasn't it wasn't that. It was some cartilage or something in his knee. So keep him in your prayers as he gets gets back going. All he was worried about was his cows getting sweet feed today. He had to go to feed the cows. So make sure they had sweet feed. Um, any other prayer requests? Eldon remember Eldon Mixon. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'll be. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any others? Any others? Remember this time of year, uh, wild game stuff and stuff's coming up. We're going to do things a little different. Um, <clears throat> we, might, we want to make sure that we cover all our bases, um, and we'll get together with all the fellas. But um, I want you to understand we're going to have it. Uh, we, 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 uh, we're going to cut back on our games and stuff because we're worried about the numbers of people that might come and work. But we need it. Our church needs it. So what we're going to have is we're going to come in together maybe that Saturday night and have a men's get-together, eat together, low country bowl, back here at our guys and our people and uh, our ladies, whoever wants to come, and let's have us the time here Saturday night. We, we want to get together and have church. So let's do that way, and then Sunday morning, come in here and have a big big time with Brother Clay, with him and his wife, and they come, and let's just have church, amen? I think we, I think we just, just keep on... Keep on riding. The young people's fixing to have the uh, Valentine's uh, meal. If you hadn't signed up for that, please do. Uh, it's helping those kids go to camp. Um, so if you hadn't signed up, please do. Uh, we're going to be delivering some too. So if it's where you can't get out and you want somebody to bring it to you, we'll be glad to. But uh, keep those in your prayers. Um, just can't get my mind back to which, which thing's next. So I feel like I ain't been here in 16 months. I was expecting to drive up and, and, and dog fennels growing up everywhere. That's how I felt. I, whew, it was bad. But uh, it is good to be here with you. And uh, we don't ever need to take a, take a, uh, for granted, you know, health-wise. And, you know, where one goes one way, one goes another. You know, I'll be honest with you. You know, I was at the hospital. My oxygen was down in the 70s. I lost a friend of mine there in Folkestone. Uh, Mike Maddox this past week, he's same shape, same thing, same same issues. Preacher, same stuff, same thing. He he just went the other way when he got sick. But um, you just you just don't know. And uh, what we need to do is be respectful of each other. Make sure we, you know, uh, if, if there's space, if people's worried about space or handshaking or whatever, listen, do what we have to do to be respectful of one another. But I it's, I can't live in fear. I can't live in fear of nothing. I mean, I got to, as, as, a, as a person living in this world, I got to know that my creator knows exactly what's coming my way. He's come, it's what's coming my way. And I, I don't be a dummy, you know, and, uh, and do things that I shouldn't do. 
But at the same time, I know that my Heavenly Father uh, is taking care of me and looking out for, and, and, and when it's my time to go see him, I'll go. And you know, it's, it's, a, it's a hard, it's a hard, uh, it's a hard uh, fact to, to come to. But the bottom line is, is none of us can dictate whether we're going to get COVID. I, poor Brother Ricky, they are trying to stay home because his wife has some issues. They're trying to stay home, and they still got it. So it's hard to know who or how or what. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. And uh, just pray God blesses us and takes care of our church. Um, we got to lead a boy to the Lord. I hope he's on here tonight. Led a boy to the Lord last week when I was sick. Uh, it was awesome. Over the phone, a little boy called me, and we uh, talked on the phone, led him to the Lord on a Tuesday. And uh, y'all been praying for him for about a year. His name's Jonathan Davis. He uh, accepted the Lord this past week, and he came. He sent me a text Thursday morning and uh, said that he had the, the honor of praying with his wife and her doctor before she went into surgery Thursday. So that's a blessing. That's a blessing right there. So y'all pray for Jonathan. He'll be here the next few weeks. He, he's got a General Lee, a 19, is it a 69, 69 Charger. He's got a General Lee car. He'll probably come sliding up here in the parking lot and get baptized here in a few weeks. So he's all excited. But um, y'all keep him in your prayer and his family. His wife's had surgery, and uh, she's, uh, she's, she's on the men too. But remember, Miss Megan, any other prayer requests before we pray? Any unspoken? Amen. Let's remember to pray for each other. Let's pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this time together, for church and the people in it, God, and all the, the things that goes on here, Lord, uh, behind the scenes and the people back there working. Um, thank you for all the things that are done, Lord, to, to, to move the kingdom forward. Thank you, God, for allowing me to be back here tonight and not be sick. Thank you, Lord, that uh, there's people getting better. We pray for those that have lost loved ones, Lord. No doubt there's, there's people that are hurting that are, um, are, are um, still praying for those that are sick. So, God, as we lift each other up, Lord, let us not forget to, to pray and lift each other up. We thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that we can come together. Lord, the devil would like to destroy everything about the church and you and everything else. God, I don't doubt this is a tool of the devil. God, help us to, to stay focused, to stay in your word, and to stay praising, and to stay worshiping, and to stay loving each other, and to just keep going, knowing that at some point in the future, you're coming for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take your Bibles, if you would. Let's look in uh, Exodus chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16. This is a good place of Scripture right here. I enjoyed, um, <clears throat> I enjoyed the uh, Exodus chapter 15, where we talked about the bitter waters of Mara, and um, then we talked about the wells of Elam. How many, how, many, how many trees, palm trees, were at Elam? Anybody remember? Seventy. How many... How many, um, how many wells were there? Twelve. What, what's the significance of those numbers, James? Oh, come on. Yeah, they try, they're, they're, they're both trying to hash it out there together. You think about twelve. Anytime you see twelve in the Bible, you think about maybe the twelve tribes or whatever. Like the number of forty. Forty. You'll see the number 40 pop up several times. 40 days and 40 nights. It rained 40 days. 40. I mean, you'll, you'll see those certain numbers seem to pop up a lot in Scripture. Well, 12 and 70 were those. Um, 70 was also the number of the, the family unit that, was, that God took care of and took them down into Egypt. So whenever um, um, Jacob or, or Israel went down into Egypt, his, where, where David made a way for him to... Joseph made a way for him to come down into Egypt. Um, seventy family members went into Egypt. It was seventy. And they were brought in and taken, taken care of. So think about that and what it means where they're at now in Elam. They're at an oasis. So the children of Israel, 400, 400 years earlier, 430 years earlier, actually, were brought into Egypt to an oasis to be taken care of because there was starvation everywhere in the land. There's no food, no water, and everything. God had a way of taking care of his people way back then. It is somehow God, in the midst of um, destruction, pain, turmoil, not sure what's going to happen tomorrow, God's in control. Whew. That's good right there. You, you, think about, you think about the children of Israel 6,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, um, <clears throat> no food, uh, the corn was dried up. Listen, this, this part of the world... 
You look at it from outer space like somebody took a big knife and just gashed the earth. No trees. There's a lot of areas there that doesn't have anything where you can grow anything at all. But here they were, and God made a place for them. God used the world to take care of his people. Now, they had to live in the world. Don't you, don't you think about that where you are today? You have to live in the world as well. This world that we live in, you, you think about all the, the things that we see and all the, the ugly in this world and things that we have to be a part of. And we, we said, well, we wish we could just... I remember, I remember I had a kid one time that said, Brother Ray, he said, when I hit it big, uh, he was a football player. But he said, Brother Ray, when I hit it big, he said, I want to buy us a, about a thousand acres and we all just live in it. And nobody can come in there but us. And that, this, this is a high school senior. You know, what he, what he was really getting at was you know, he, he'd gotten saved, and he understood the draw of Egypt. He understood the draw of the world and the effect it has on you. And, and you know, I, I've, I've often, that's been uh, that's 22 years ago. Last year, I asked him, I said, hey, have you made it big yet? He laughed. He said, nope. <laughs> nope. Yeah. I said, well, listen, I'm looking for that, that land, man. I mean, you can get together. He said, oh, it's over there. He said, it's over there. He said, we're going to have to die to get there, though. I said, that's good. That's good. But you, know, you, you think about the, the way God has, has built this, this world and has sustained his people in it all throughout. I mean, especially the Jewish people, the Jewish nation has gone through so much. Um, I mean, listen, been nearly annihilated on different occasions, but it's still a strong group of people. They won't be annihilated. There'll be there'll at least be 144,000 uh, during the tribulationary period of time that'll be preaching um, to the Jewish nation that's still alive during those days. So, listen, God's still in control. We look around and we see all this stuff and see all the the you know the presidents, the, the things that are going on now. I, I have literally in my I've had to unplug. I cannot understand how a nation built on the things of God can be what we are now. And, and you know, you just stand back and say, Lord, even so, come quickly. And that's why we need to now, now make sure that if we have loved ones that are lost, to reach out to them. If we have people that don't know Christ, reach out to them. Because the king might not be very far off from coming back. And we have a responsibility to make sure we live it a certain way that, that represents the kingdom of God on this earth so they'll want to be saved as well. I, I, that's it. That's, that's, our, that's it in a nutshell. So um, you think about the children of Israel as they get ready. Um, they go into Elam, and they go in and they get each, each tribe, uh, each tribe, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, get all the tribes, and then each one has a palm tree. With the palm trees comes dates, these dates, these fruits, so they all got a few of those now. It's only 70, and there's, there's many... And, a 600,000 men, remember the number of people, there's 600,000 men besides women and children, besides the mixed multitude. So there's some Egyptians that just come along with them. So 70 trees ain't that many trees when you, when you get thinking about it. So here, here they are at the wells of Elam, and they encamp there by the waters, the Bible says, at the end of chapter 15. Verse 16 says this, And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of children of Israel came in the wilderness of sin. Um, some people would pronounce that as sign. But isn't it something? Why didn't they just stay by Elam? You know, you know I've, 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 I've studied this before and read through here, and especially about a month ago, I really understood Mara and Elam, the difference. Mara had bitter water, Elam had sweet water. God took them to the bitter water first so they could appreciate the sweet water. But then he led them away from there pretty quick. They didn't get to stay. I wonder why that is. I wonder why that is. I wonder why God don't just let us have good days every day. Wouldn't it be something to everything to be good all the time? You know, if, if, if everything was good all the time, imagine how, how miserable people we'd be. Listen, we, we, we got to have a little rain. We got to have a little hard times. We, we got to have some of these things. It keeps us praying. It keeps us leaning on our Heavenly Father. Folks, we, we, we're a people that are forgetful. We look at these Israelites and these, these Hebrew people wandering around in the desert and think, boy, if they'd have just, I mean, they had the cloud. They could have just followed. Listen, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, yet we still murmur. We still complain. We still act as though we don't know what's going to happen next. Listen, God is in control. And, and as, as they are making their way out, the congregation is making its way out, they had to go through some tough times. God is teaching them some things. 
Got to teach. Just like you have a child, there's some things you want to teach that child. That child has got to go through some tough times. That child has got to learn some things. And, and it ain't, you, you can't just tell them. You all right, parents? You, you can't just tell them. Sometimes you've you got to enact a little pain. That's ugly, ain't it, Em? Well, pain's ugly, ain't it? That thing ain't never had no whipping. Look at her. Uh, you bet she has. Hey, listen, she got, I won't bring it up. I got, I got on her in Lowe's one time. Lady got mad with me in Lowe's because I spanked her in Lowe's. I said, well, it's a long way outside. I wasn't going to go outside and do it. I'm going to do it right there where we was at. But, you know, a little bit of pain goes a long way. Why is it? Because you remember. You remember. It, it, it refreshes it. I can remember growing up, cutting up, and, boy, we'd get in trouble. And our mama, my mom would beat us. To, I always tell everybody, she whipped me to stay in shape. And, and my cousin Billy, you know, he lived with us. You know, me and Billy grew up there. Jeffrey, y'all was always over there eating and hanging out. And Listen, whoever was there got whipped. If, 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 the whip, if it was time for the whippings, everybody got them. And uh, poor Darren Hodges, he, his mama, my mama whipped him more than Darren's mama whipped him. And, and looking back, all of them would come back and they'd love on mama. You know, they just, they loved, because they knew she cared about what they were going to be. She didn't put up with it. She, there, there was things we didn't do. I can remember growing up as a kid, you didn't, you didn't go inside. Yeah, just stay outside. Ain't nothing to do outside. Stay outside. I can remember sitting on the front steps of the house waiting for the Debbie cake time. You know, because you can get you a Debbie cake about 4 o'clock. You know, and I can remember sitting on the steps out front trying to think of something. To, you know, back, that's where all the inventors came from back in those days. That's, that's that generation of people that had to sit outside that learned how to do things. You know, we, we, we was the ones that fixed our own go-karts. They didn't take them to the store. And fix them. Man, I could repair a chain. I could run wire and nails through them. But listen, I could fix a go-kart. And, and, and looking back, all, the, all these things of, 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 we try to take that away from our kids today. We try to take that away from them because we want to protect them. We want to have the best of everything. That ain't good for them. It's, it's, it's good when we don't have. It's good when you, when you have, to, have to suffer a little bit. You know, and, and, and growing up, we never had a whole lot of money, but there was a lot of love in that old house. You know, I can remember, uh, I don't ever remember us ever going out and eating in no big fancy restaurant or places. We never did stuff like that. It, that's too much money. We could buy groceries a whole week for what it costs to go out and eat. We, we just never did those things. Looking back, it was the, it was the best days. It, was, why, it, it, it taught us. It taught us some things. As a Christian, as a Christian, I've been through some tough days spiritually. Some, some things that nobody else even knows about. It's just between me and God. There's been some things that I have, I have felt where I've been hurt or lacked or, or I felt like God wasn't, wasn't looking my way like he ought to or giving me enough attention or, or I've just felt like in my spirit God wasn't minding me like he ought to. Or I've just, sometimes I've felt that way, you know. You, you, you get to feeling sorry for yourself. But God is always in the business of teaching us something and showing us. You know, one thing that I had to understand as a new Christian was that the world didn't revolve around me. You know, that, that I was a servant. I wasn't the master. That I, I, was, I was the one that, that needed to be serving. I was the one that needed to be giving. I was the one that needed to be praying. And if there ever come a time, listen, if there ever comes a time in my life where I want to ask myself, well, why don't I get to have? I get to thinking. I get to remembering that God has saved me. And here at some point in the future, I'm going to be transported to a place that my mind can't even wrap around. That, that, that there's going to come a time that when I step into heaven, I'll get to see things. I can't, I can't imagine what the first day is going to be like. The very first moments where my mind uh, grasps the idea that it's all real. Uh, it, we're, we're going now. Well, the world stopped, the pain stopped, the cancer stopped, the hospital stopped, the COVID stopped, the, all that stopped. Now, now it's time to focus on the future. Now it's time to focus on the things. That, I can't wait to, to see heaven. I can't wait to see what the, I wonder what the sounds are going to be like. I, I wonder, is there going to be birds? You know, I wonder, I wonder when you get into heaven, is there going to be bakeries? I hope so. You know, I just, I just wonder, what's it going to be like when you, when you go in the gates? You know, there's so many things that we, we as Christians, 
that we need to remind ourselves of regularly. When we think that we, we're, 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 we're not getting what we should or, or God's a little too hard on us. We need to remember that God has given us His Son and we get to go to heaven based on that fact. Now, they, had some, they, they, they left Elam, the children of Israel did, and then they began to, 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 to murmur. Let's look here. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Sin, Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. So they're 15, they're about two weeks out. So they're about two weeks out. Not two years. These folks are two weeks. So in two weeks, they've been up and down, up and down, and up and down. And it's going to continue on and on and on. Listen to this. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Two weeks. Just two weeks. Now, now they, were, they were murmuring about seven, eight days ago. Then they went to Elam. Here they are murmuring again. And the children of Israel said unto, said unto them, Them is Moses and the leadership. Them is Moses and the leadership. And the children of Israel said unto them, would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. So here they are. They were slaves. They were slaves in Egypt is what they were. But they, they, as long as their bellies was full, they were happy. Listen, we're, grow, we're growing in America like that. We're growing, a, we're growing a country like that now. As long as our bellies full, do whatever y'all want to do up there. As long as our bellies are full, just fill our bellies. Let us sit by the flesh pots in America. That's what America's doing now. They're just wanting to sit by flesh pots. They want everything to be, to be free and everything to be okay. Listen, now's the time the church needs to be acting. Now's the time. Brother Larry, we were talking about this a month ago, but you know, we, we said the second Saturday of the, of the month, we're going to start feeding everybody. Well, that's not this Saturday, but next. Gotcha. But we're going to, we, listen, we, we, if, if somebody's going to feed folks in our community, I think it ought to be the church. I think it ought to be the church. We, we'll have hamburgers or hot dogs. Listen, listen, we ain't got to have a, a filet mignon. We, if I like a hot dog. We'll wrap up hot dogs and, 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 and make up stuff for folks to come by. We want it, and, and we ought to call it, listen, I was reading here and studying, we ought to call it uh, 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 manna. We ought to take the word manna and use it for something in that ministry. When we feed our community, call it something around the word manna. Because as we feed our community, we want to give not only a little mouthful of food, but a little bit of Jesus when he come by. You know, I want to be a part of a church that's helping the community. Not just folks getting checks from the government, but this is our community. Let's make up a little tray of hot dogs. I, I like tacos. We'll make up tacos. We have tacos Saturday one month, you know. And, and people come by and, and pick up a free meal. Maybe they stay and hang out with us a little while. But I think it would be a great thing. But God instructs Moses. Watch this in verse 4. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. <laughs> That's amazing. Can you imagine hearing that in your prayer time? I'm about to rain bread from heaven. Can I tell you, when we talk about manna here, uh, manna, some people talk about manna being one thing or another. The word manna, if you, if, you, if you look up in Scripture, three or four different places it's talked about. And the, word, the manna kind of resembled, um, they call it a hoar frost. You know, like in the morning times, you get up and you look and, and, and on the grass, it's kind of wet and it's white. That's what, the, that's, what was, that's what was there. That's what was left. What, what happened is, is in the morning times when the dew would settle away from, what was left, you know, what was left, God allowed that manna to, to, to be on the ground in the mornings, whether it fell from heaven, whether it come up from wherever, but it was allowed to be on the ground so they could collect it every morning. It, it, it was like a, they said it was like a coriander seed, um, and it was a, it had a sweet. It was, they said it wasn't as sweet as sugar, but it was about half so. Can you imagine having a sweet cake every morning for breakfast? And and and, and the Bible says, as as we read here, that they had this every day, and not only did they have. Uh, the, 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 the cakes in the morning, what they have in eating? Anybody know? Quail. God give them quail. He couldn't give them chicken. He got quail. I like quail, y'all. I'll be honest with you. If I had to pick, I reckon I'd pick a quail if somebody would pluck it and clean it and cook it for me. But now, let's, let's read a little further. Watch this. And Moses and Aaron said unto the people in verse 6, 
Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, At even then you shall know that the Lord hath brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning shall ye see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that ye murmur against us? So he's telling the children of Israel, Listen, you guys are murmuring against us. Don't murmur against us. You're murmuring against God. So here the leadership is trying to train the people. Lord, give us, give, us, give us leaders in churches that shows the people the way to live and the way to do it. Lord, give us, give us leadership in our churches that tells our people, listen, this is the way that God would have us do it. This is the direction that God would have us go. And I got, I got news for you. Um, whenever the Lord gives me direction for something or gives Brother Ronnie or Brother Larry or Brother Vaughn, any, any of our church people or leaders that are involved in their classes, these ladies, Brother Bright, that's doing the youth, when God gives them direction, follow. Hey, listen, it's an awesome and, and, and scary enough responsibility to hear from God and then lead a group of people. The worst part is when you have to fight tooth and nail. I've been there. Just to see what God would have done, done. Listen, I, I, I've been at church before where it's a, a, a people pull at you every dozens of people getting saved every month. I, I, I look back and, and, and at the amount of people being saved when we was trying to build Hickox Church over there. But listen, I can tell you it's an uphill battle. Listen, the only people that voted against the building of that church was the leadership. It, it was rough. But, but, I, but I was 30 nothing, 35, 36, too dumb to care, knowing that's what God said to do, and let's head that direction. And looking back, I'm glad I did. But I'm going to tell you, it was an uphill battle. It was an uphill battle. And, and the hounds of hell chased us every single day. Please understand something. I, none of this is about me or my reputation or who I am. It's about what God wants seen done. And, and I have a responsibility to carry that out. And, 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 and at some point, we're not together on that direction. You don't need me no more. I mean, that, that's basically what, what, that, what that amounts to. Because we all have to be on the same page. And I got to tell you, I don't think I know everything either. So I need you praying. Because I want to hear what you have to say. It ain't, it ain't just about me getting in my prayer closet and coming out and saying, okay, here's what we're going to do. No, 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 no. It could be, my job is to take this word and preach and teach. And, and I think it's the church's responsibility. Let's, let's lead ministries and let's grow the church. That's, that's more for you guys. We need help doing those things. So I like to hear it. I like, I like people to say, hey, what are we going to do about so-and-so? Huh? Well, what do you think? Let's get together and let's see what you think. Let's pray about it. Man, I, that, to me, that's where church functions. We're congregationalists. My responsibility is to preach the book so that people get to know more about Jesus and so they can learn and grow, and, and that's, that's, the, that's the goal. Um, boy, this, this is a lot of stuff right here all the way through. I'm going um, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, look bump down to, to verse 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel speak unto them, saying, At even you shall eat flesh. So in the evenings, eat flesh. And in the morning you shall be filled with bread. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So God, there he is. God's showing them. God's had them take, a, take a, an example and show them that he's about to do something in their midst to prove who he is to them. How is he already proven it? Anybody? Anybody? And we're, we're, we're a couple weeks in this, two weeks, th- uh, probably 20 days since they left Egypt. It ain't a long time. They're less than a month out of Egypt. They're having to have tough life lessons about what God's doing. It, it, say, say 20 days. Say, say in the past 20 days, um, Miss Tiny, you've seen a pillar of fire that God's led you by night and a pillar of cloud by day. God's done that for you 24-7. He parted the Red Sea. Let you walk across on dry. 20 days, 20 days, not 20 years, 20 days. All these things are happening around you. Yet, when it comes time to eat, he's telling them, listen, I'm going to show you this so you'll learn. They're still having to learn. You're talking about a hard-headed bunch of folk. How much different are we? (laughs) How much different are we? When God has shown us over and over that he can take care of us. That God has met needs, that God has seen those. Listen, God has seen people saved that you never thought would come to know Christ. 
God's still doing it. God is still in the business of saving souls. Don't ever grow weary of, of well done. I talked to Brother Rick Corum on the phone today. He's excited about coming in June. And uh, he said, uh, he said uh, Brother Ray, he said, people's been counseling, counseling on me um, all year. He said, you know, uh, three out of four is counseling now, counseling. He, I said, well, brother, you come, you come sit with us one Sunday. We can preach. We'll love on you down there, down in Oak uh, Hill. But he said, well, he said he's enjoying a little bit of time off. And I get thinking about that, you know. When a man like that, when a man with the, with the guns he's got to win people to the kingdom is having to sit on the sideline because folks aren't having church anymore. Listen, that's a problem. That's a problem. We, we need those folks on the front line preaching, telling, telling, telling. I told him, brother, you run empty Sunday, you come see us. You come see us. We want him. Brother Mark Yakeman, he's going to come and preach. I want us to get to know Brother Mark and their ministry up there uh, over in Brantley County. It's in this county that we're in. But we want to be involved a little more monetarily in their ministries. And I want Brother Mark's going to come and explain what they do. We want to make sure, I want to make sure you understand what our ministries are that we're involved in. Because it's, it's one thing to, to just give some monies and, well, that's good. It's another thing for us to go over there and beat nails into boards and love on some folk over there that need a little help. Brother Mark is raising up a, a group of men over there. It doesn't cost them a dime. They go there and stay and live as long as they need to. I guess, Brother John, is that correct? They stay as long as they need to until they get on their feet. I know one guy personally from Folkestone that... They, 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 they may have saved his life. And he's, he's back to work, back doing his thing, back doing his stuff. Folks, I'm going to tell you, we can be involved in those kind of ministries. It's work. It's work. It's more than just coming to church on Wednesday nights. It's more than just showing up for Sunday school on Sunday morning. It's work. But it takes time. And I, I thank the Lord that he's showing us. God tells them in verse 16 to gather an omer. I don't know how much an omer is. Some people can look it up and probably find out. But it's, it's enough. It was enough. For one person, for one morning meal, an omer, however much an omer is. But they would gather up an omer of manna. And they would, they would, it, the, the Bible teaches that that manna took just a little bit of heat. Didn't take much heat at all to make a cake. And it was high in nutritional value. It had, had like, it only like two parts. It was really, really, really uh, not much to it. Kind of like the coriander seed. Um, but it didn't need to be ground. It was already in flower form. Can you imagine that? And they would, they, when, the, when the dew would settle off, they'd, get, they'd, they'd pull it together in little piles, and each person would get an omer. And they'd make a little, a little sweet cake out of it. Now, and they, they would do that Monday through Saturday. But on Saturday, they would take up two omers so that each person wouldn't have to go out on Sunday to gather their food because so, that was the day of rest, the Sabbath. So they would make up two cakes for every person on that day. Now, what would happen is that some of the folks, they'd worry about tomorrow. You ever worry about tomorrow? You ever worry what's going to happen tomorrow? So on a Tuesday, the, the mama, she's, you know, she's got 15 head of young, and she said, well, we need to make sure there's going to be enough. So she'd gather extra. She'd gather extra because there's plenty. And what would happen to it? The Bible says here that it would rot, that the bugs would grow in it, and it'd, just, it'd rot and go right down to nothing. The next morning, you get up there. It, the only part that would be good left is that one omer. rest of it rotted. But that one omer, it was good for that. That was Tuesday manna. That was it. But on Saturday, when they went to get it, it lasted. Listen, do you think God is in control of everything and can see it? There are some places I'd like to be able to walk back in Scripture and take a stroll and watch. I'd like to be able to walk in that camp of the Israelites and see them taking that omer taking that little bit of bread, making it together into a cake, and putting that little small furniture on a fire and making a cake. Boy, I'd love to have been able to be out there when they gathered up them quail in the evenings, wouldn't you? And, and, and everybody gets one or nine. I don't know how many. But the Bible says they all had flesh. So the Lord knew what they needed. He took care of their comforts. He could have gave them manna morning and evening. He could have just gave them just that all the time. But he, but he gave them flesh. He gave them those things that he, as God could control in such a way that man couldn't do it. You know, they, they didn't have big hunting parties go out and kill big giant bears and bring them back and feed them. They didn't have none of that. God sent it from heaven. So the people was able to stand back and, you know, say, what a mighty God we serve. God was meeting their needs. 
As the children of Israel left Egypt, God was meeting their needs. Can I tell you tonight? He is still meeting your needs. He is still part of your life. He is still engaged with you today, just like in those days. Help us not be hard-headed. Lord, help us not be, uh, as the Bible talks about, a stiff-necked generation to where um, if, if it's not this kind of flesh or if it's not that kind of manna or we want extra for tomorrow or we got to have this or for that, sometimes God gives us just enough for today. You know, is that, is that why the Bible teaches us that God blesses us every single day? It's from uh, Psalm 68, 19. Every day, the Bible says he gives us another set of blessings. And I wonder if that's the reason why. So that we'll lean on him. So that we'll call on him when we're in trouble. Because we know, see, the thing about this COVID, I wasn't sure about my breathing. I, I, got, I got scared. And there was some times I was by myself and, and, and it got to be a psychological thing. And I'd breathe harder and I'd get more anxious. And the harder you breathe and anxious, the lower your oxygen level went and it got worse and worse and worse. And you know what I had to realize? is that God was in control of my next breath. And I began to slow down. And I realized the God that gave me the breath before was going to give me the next one if he wanted me to have it. Folks, I'm going to tell you, that's real. And, you know, as life goes, you're going to find the times in your life where you've got to respond to what God's doing in your life. You've got to recognize that God's at work and doing things around you that you don't understand. But God might not give you but just one day's worth of insight. God might give you just today, just enough for today. And maybe, maybe he gives you a month's worth. That'd, that'd be great too, wouldn't it? But if he gives you just enough for today, thank him for it. Thank God for his blessings for just today. Thank God that he, that, that he, he thanks enough of you to bless you today with health to, to be able to drive up here to church. That tomorrow, he's going to give you another set of blessings where you have enough strength to get up and cook you, cook you a little mouthful of breakfast and look forward to maybe getting off work and, and before dark. And, and, and thank God for those times and those, those things that we forget. So we, we, we think that we're supposed to have mountaintop times all the time. Lord, help us. Help us to be thankful for just that little bit of omer, that little omer of manna. Lord, help us be thankful for what you're doing. As the children of Israel go right on through here, the Bible says in the end of chapter 16 that that manna is kept as a testimony. That, that, that Aaron gathers some up, verse 33, Moses said to Aaron, take a pot, put an omer full of manna therein, and lay it, up, lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it upon the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel did eat manna, Forty years. So for the next 40 years, they had manna. Never was there room to complain anymore. God gave them a sweet roll, a little honey bun, a little honey bun, if you will, every morning. So they had that every day. And the children of Israel did eat manna for 40 years until they came to the land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came into the borders of the land of Canaan. Now, it was a tenth part of an ephah, which I don't know what that, that means. But I want, you, I want to tell you something tonight as we get ready to close. God takes care of our needs. Lord, help, help us to be thankful of the manna, of the flesh, of the, of the, of the quail. You know, you, that's pretty good eating if you ask me, a good old quail. And, and we, we, we think about the, the traveling this group of people, for 40 years, a whole generation of people is going to die off the face of the earth before they finally get to the land of Canaan. But this, this, this group of people, God is, God is building his nation from that we're still talking about today. So he, he never let them down. Listen, the, the same God that protected those people for those years is still doing it today. Still doing it today. You know, I, I'm, often, I'm often reminded that, that when I go through hard times, I can look around and see people that are going through hard times. Folks, we, we need to be thankful for what God's done. And remember, that little bit of omer or that little bit of quail that God gives us every day might not be a lot in a lot of people's eyes, but it's just what God wants you to have that day. And, 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 and guess what? He's promised you that tomorrow. 
And he's promised you that the next day and the next day. Amen? God's good. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this time, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy towards us. We thank you for your word and for what the Bible means and, God, how it reaches out and touches our lives. We, we thank you, God, that it's like a balm of Gilead, God, when we can read your word and know that you have a, you have a, a message there for us to take home and to chew on, God. Thank you for the children of Israel and all that they learned and the things they had to do, the way that they had to grow, lessons they had to be taught. Lord, we're just like them. Help us, God, to, to see you in everything and to be thankful for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.